Hello and welcome back to another Bit Repairs video. Sorry about the delay that there's been since the last video. I know it's been quite some time, but uh, I've had a few things to do. I've had a lot of work to catch up on. Um, and mainly it's been to do with a, a move of location. So let's go on to our main view here. We'll see the camera first. Um, you'll notice things have changed ever so slightly. So exactly the same equipment, however, just a slightly different um, settings. So what we've got today is, um, it's been quite uh, quite a while, and I, I haven't done, I've noticed, a, uh, a an iPhone 6 Plus touch disease video. So I've got one here, which uh, came in. Uh, let's just make sure there's no, no, it's recess. Uh, so you see that it's at the main screen. Um, I'll go there, push the button. Okay, quick start, press OK, and we're not getting anything at all on that, so no response whatsoever on this phone. So what we'll do, we'll do a, uh, there's two different fixes you can do for touch disease. Um, the first one is just to reflow the IC. Uh, that generally doesn't seem to be a permanent one. However, sometimes it can, you, you can find that it is a permanent fix. Um, so... I don't know. Um, I'd say I've probably done around about 30, maybe 40 temporary fixes on these, um, whereby I have done a reflow, and I've probably had maybe um, five or ten of them back. So not a massive amount. But before we do the, the touch disease repair, um, what we'll do is we'll just make 100% sure that it is touch disease, that it's not the screen. Um, so I'm just going to take these connectors off here. I'll take the screen plate off next. Uh, it's pretty awkward to show actually from that angle, but I'm sure we can do it. So take these screws. The middle screw on that is missing. So what we're doing first with this touch disease repair is we want to make sure um, that we've eliminated everything first. So what we want to do is we're going to eliminate it being the screen. So I'll come back on again. It's still not touching. No, no response at all to touch. We're going to take the battery out. First things first, always take the battery out. And we'll disconnect the screen. Disconnect the home button flex. There we go. So that's all disconnected there now. Right. So what we'll do first is um, we're just going to check. The most important thing is these two holes here. This one and this one. This is where touch disease occurs. So if we have a little look under the microscope view now, and we're just going to make sure that we've not got um, that we've not got any long screw damage on this device first. So really ruins your day when you go and do a, a repair, and then you find after you've done it that it still doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because you've got long screw damage on the device. So that's the first hole checked. Second hole looks okay. Can't see any signs there of any kind of long screw damage. So that's that's the first part done. Uh, next part is we're just going to grab a an iPhone 6 Plus screen. So this is my known good iPhone 6 Plus screen. I'll switch back to main view again. My known good iPhone 6 Plus screen, so we're just going to plug that in. There we go. Check that it's all in OK. Yep, looks good to me. Plug that in. Switch on. Boot back up again. We're just going to verify that we still don't have touch. Now, the problem with touch disease is it can be intermittent. So you can find that it comes back, it goes, it comes back, it goes. Sometimes you knock the device, it goes. Sometimes you knock it and it comes back. 
there seems to be no rhyme or reason as to whether touch disease is actually going to go or come back again. Occasionally, it will go permanently. Um, and then that's it, it's gone. So let's just try that. So we've still not got touch on this phone. So that's okay. This is a, this is now, I would say, a verified touch disease problem phone. So what we do next is we just want to make sure back in the iPhone 6 Plus part box. Okay, so the next part we just want to check is we just want to make sure there's no connector damage. So if I zoom out here, let's have a little look at the connector. So you can see there that that's the majority of the touch stuff down here. So can't see any prior damage straight away. Connector's looking good. That, that's your touch connector. Uh, I generally see damage around this end here, which starts affecting it badly. So what we'll do now is we'll take off the... Uh, oops, sorry, main view. Um, I'm just going to take off this little piece of paper here. There we go. Stick that to the side of the customer screen. So... That little piece of paper there, whenever you start doing your touch disease repair, starts getting a bit mangled up. So we don't really want that to happen. Um, right, so we've verified now that A, there's no connector damage. B, there is no long screw damage. C, there is not the screen. So we're pretty sure on this device now that we've checked those three things that this is going to be touch disease. So let's get the board out of this device because we need to get to the back of it now in order to do the repair. So take all of these screws out. You notice here that we're using the magnetic pad so that we don't get any of the screws mixed up. I've got a, a known pattern here that I follow. So. Sorry, I need to be able to get you to see some of this, don't I? Whoops. Not clever. That pull there thing just popped up. So, unplug the camera. Do you know what? It's really awkward trying to work so that other people can see. <laughs> then you get people texting you. Unplug the SIM tray. Right, we we'll have to pick this up now. We just need to unplug that. Flex at the bottom. Two screws down there. Number one. Number two. Just pop off the antenna connector. Swish that sideways. Top antenna connector. Just pop that off gently. Pop it out of there. One flip them to another screw there. So that's all then done. This phone to me feels like it's never been looked at before. So we do that. Take the board sideways. Don't forget your rear antenna. Move it sideways. Click that out. Click the antenna off. Now we've just got the board now, so we push that with the screen. So we've just got the board. Let's just have a little look sideways and see if we can see any bending to it. So if you look at that, I can actually see, if I look at that with my eye, I can see a tiny amount of bending to it. So it's not much, but if I just lay something next to it, you, you can see just a tiny bit. I don't think you'd be able to see with the camera there, but um, I, I can just about see a tiny little bit of a bend in that board. So you look at a board that's new from factory, and you look at one of these that's developed touch disease, and you always know that, uh, that, that there's been a bend to the board generally. So let's just have a little look. Yep, so you can see there. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, da, da, da. I, I can see it quite clearly. Slight bend on that chassis. Right, that, that's what causes it. So that's what the uh, that, that's what the end result is. So 
what we're going to do is I'm just going to get this board. I'll put it on the heat plate first. So we're just going to leave it on the heat plate for a minute, just to melt the uh, the, the glue on that um, on that piece on the back, that sticker. So I just need to get my uh, scalpel. There we are. So need that to warm up a little bit first. Okay. So my trusty wrist protector. I'm just going to turn that over now. Right. First thing we're going to do now. I'll see if I can catch it on the microscope for you. So I want to try and get this sticker off as nice as possible. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to see if we can get that under there. Okay. I'm actually looking at the monitor here. I usually look at the uh, the the microscope, but I'll try and look at the monitor with you. So there, we're just peeling it off sideways. That heat really assists in it coming off nicely. Um, problem you've got, you see, is this sticker, the, the surround of this sticker is actually, it actually consists of conductive strands. So on this sticker, let me just show you again the sticker. So that sticker, I know it looks innocent enough. However, around the edge here is, if you were to peel back and you get little strands, you can actually get little strands of metal coming out of it. Now, the metal is obviously conductive. So if you pull that off and then you end up getting small pieces of metal, from those strands on your board, you can short your board out. So oh, that's one of the uh, the biggest problems taking that sticker off is people having problems shorting the board out afterwards. So try and get it off as cleanly as possible. It does look even nicer when you put it back on again as well because nobody can see that you've been inside the phone. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to make sure there's no more stickers around here. They're all gone they'll just end up frying as soon as we put uh, heat on this board. So what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just going to seal off the IC which is the the touch IC that's affected by touch disease. So the one that's affected by touch disease, I'll show you now on ZXW. If we go into here and if I go into remote desktop so this is the chip here, which is affected by touch disease. And I've highlighted the pin already. It's this one here, the M1 pin. We'll show you even more when I go into a bit more detail. Um, so go back out there into uh, main view. There we go. So back onto there. Um, so that, that's the that's the uh, DIC that's really affected by touch disease so that's the one that we're going to take off the board now now I'm surrounding it in Capcom tape because we don't want the rest of the board to be getting any heat that we don't want it to get I've also you'll notice this plate here this is a preheater so I'm preheating the board so that it's it's reached the temperature first and I'm not going to end up damaging other components because I don't have to apply quite as much heat to this board now so preheating is is really a, a big trick to micro soldering. Um, so I'm going to use some flux now. I'm just going to go to microscope view. Let's get this in view now. So let me just there we go. So you can see there, you can see there the chip that I have just surrounded. Okay, so that's the chip. Remember where that dot is? It's in the top left corner in the orientation I've got it. So that's the chip that we're going to be taking off now. So what I'm going to do first is, before we heat it up, we're just going to stick a big glob of flux all over the top. Spread it all around. Spread it all around. We want loads of flux on this because what we want to do, ideally, is we want to try and get this chip off nice and cleanly. 
Um, I'd say 50% of the time you can reuse these chips. Um, if I can get this off cleanly and put it straight back on again, then absolutely brilliant, you can reuse it. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to reuse the chip. I'm going to show you a method which is a far easier method because I think reusing the chip is a far more difficult method. Um, fair enough, it does save you a lot of money having to reball, a lot of time a eh, having to reball, or if you can't reball, it saves you a lot of money having to, to purchase these touch chips because people have realized that they're in demand and the price has gone up accordingly for them. So you're having to pay for them. I'm just, my, uh, I'm just dipping my tweezers in isopropyl and then just wiping them down because I want all the stickiness off them. I end up getting quite sticky, the, uh, the tweezers. So what I'm going to do now, I'm use some hot air, switch that on. Hopefully you can still hear me. So I'm going to whack that right the way up now. And this chip, we're just going to remove this chip from the board now. So I'm just going to go straight in and I'm going to try and get a nice clean lift on this now. So nice clean lift. I'm going to put that there, and then I'm going to see how easily, with one eye, I can get a nice clean lift. So, so it's very difficult for you to actually see that chip, because I've had to zoom in, and now you can't see as much anymore. Um, yeah, that's, that's tricky, that. Let's see if I can do it without zooming in. Now, if I mess this up, it's your fault. <laughs> so anyway, let's give it a whirl. So I'm going to heat the board up. Now, what I'm looking at first is I'm looking for this one here at the side. This, this little component at the side here, this coil. I'm looking to see that start moving first because... Once I see that moving, I know that the board's got up to temperature and that things are mobile. So that's moving. Right, that's moving now. So there's a good chance that the IC is going to start moving shortly. Okay. Right, I'm going to see if I can lift this up now. Right, so we've got a nice clean lift there. Absolutely lovely clean lift. In all honesty, the, the way that that chip came off there, that's a real good candidate for just doing a fix and reattach. Because if you look here, if you look at this, all of the pads are still individual not connected in any way so all of the solder that was on each pad should still be on each pad so in theory you could do a straight down again you know do do the repair and and then stick it straight back down again so the one that we're looking at now is we want to be looking at the the pin now that we're going to look at is the m1 pin so the M1 pin is this one here, that one there. So let's just have a little nudge of it and let's see what happens. Seems quite well attached actually, that pin. Sometimes you'll find that when you, you give that pin a nudge, it will just completely fall off the board. But in this instance, it does seem quite well attached still. Um, so anyway, 
we still have to run the jumper. So we can't get away with the fact that um, that it's probably that pin that's causing the problem. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to replace our scalpel. To do this, you really do need a sharp scalpel. You should always make sure you're not working on a, a blunt blade. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to have a look at that pen and what we're going to do is zoom right the way in. Hopefully you can still see all of this. There we go. Right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to start scraping the board a little bit here. Right. So what you're trying to do is uncover the copper. Don't sever it. Make sure you do this on some test boards first. even though I'm making this look straightforward it really couldn't be anything more further than the truth um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to put that touch tip back on the board again even though that is that that's a prime candidate I'm, I'm kicking myself now for doing this video because I could have this repair done much quicker um, without having to do these next steps uh, if I just if I just chucked that straight back on again, that, that would save me a lot of time. But what I'm going to do now is, I've done that, so that's the, uh, that's, that's the copper exposed. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to clean up all of these pads now. So I'm going to put a load of flux on them. Right, I'm going to turn my soldering iron on. I'm going to get a big load of solder. I'm going to get rid of all of these pads off the board. Okay. So, I'm just going to blast all these pads off the board. Leaving us with a nice, clean... Okay. just bump them all down and then we're going to get a bit of wick and this wick this really is difficult when you're only with one eye I can't stress exactly how difficult it is but you'll see when you're doing it for yourself if you're ever recording videos just how much of a disadvantage it puts you at only being able to see with one eye we really are being as delicate as possible here You do not want to pull a pad from under this IC. If you pull a pad from under this IC while you're doing this repair, you seriously are in for a whole world of problems. Unless, of course, it's an NC. But 
Not tomorrow. It won't be. This used to be quite a common repair, this. Um, I'd say it still is quite common. Um, but as the, as the phones get older, people aren't willing to, to pay the money to get them repaired. And as you can see, that this isn't a quick repair. This, this, this really does take skill, time, attention. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to switch off this camera view. I'll switch it back to me in a sec. So I need to see with both eyes exactly how good my wicking's been. So I'm getting some isopropyl. Okay. I'm just going to clean the board up a little bit and make sure that I've got all of those pads all cleaned up now. So, you can see a few of them down in the bottom left-hand corner that I've missed. So, I've missed two in the far bottom left. That, that doesn't matter too much because I'm going to use that solder, actually. I'm going to use that to make a small jumper wire here. So, let me just switch back on again here. So, microscope view. So you can see the two blobs in the bottom left-hand corner. Sorry, it just looks like it's at the bottom of the screen, actually, on that. But you can see them two blobs. I'm actually going to use the solder on those two blobs for my, for my little mini trace. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pin... going to tin that trace coming down. Okay. Right. We've just pinned it up now. So what we want to do is Just this piece of jumper wire now. I'm just going to tin that. Okay. So we've tinned our jumper wire, and we're just going to put a small piece of wire now that goes the length of that. Just runs the length of it. So I'm going to tack it down. tricky, I might need to use some tweezers if this doesn't work. Yeah, let's just go with some tweezers. So I've got a small piece of wire I've just cut off there now. I've got my trusty tweezers. Okay. Soldering iron. Sorry for going all quiet on you. Just when you're concentrating on these things, you really do have to make sure what you're doing is right. So, there we go. I'm just going to bend that end over now so that it comes into contact with that pad.
right. The light doesn't look like there's that much solder on there, actually. It's a little bit sparse, so I might just try and dab a little bit more on. I've just got to make sure I don't move it out of the way when I'm doing this. See, just doing that, I've just moved it and, and I've just taken it back off again. See how finicky it is. Okay. Let's just see how that is now. We just need to clean it up. Okay. So what you'll notice sometimes is that it's it's gone very much too close to that pad at the side, to that to the one to the right of it. So first of all. I'm just going to trim it down a bit. Okay. I've just trimmed it to the right length now. Get rid of that piece. There we go. That's gone. So now we've got a little kink in it that we don't want. We don't want that little kink there. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to use a bit of heat now. I'm going to heat the board up. Just that bit there. Okay. See how much easier that was there? Just a little bit of heat. Now we've got our perfect little jumper. Okay? I know. It, it is tricky. There's no doubt about it. There's absolutely no kidding yourself about how finicky that is. However, you can spend as much time as you need to spend on it. That's it. So just making sure the board is nice and clean now. Okay. So out there, we want to make sure there's no fluff. We've not dislodged any components. I dislodged one up here when we were reflowing before. I put it back into place immediately though while the board was still reflowing. So that's okay. That one there is still touching base in the right place. That's okay. So we've not lost any pads. We've not moved any components. Right. We're now ready to put our chip back on again. So Let's grab a iPhone 6 Touch IC. The iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus Touch ICs are both identical. So these are the iPhone Touch ICs. We've so got a nice big strip of them. You can see how regular this repair is done. Um, just open it up. I'll grab an IC. Off the end, there it is. Right, so that's the one we're going to use. Let's just pop it onto the board. If 
it's willing to come out. There we go. Put that there. Put them back away. Now, before we put this on, what we're going to do is we're just going to check it because when you buy these ICs, they are not all perfect. I'd love to say they are all perfect. However, you buy them and sometimes they don't work. Sometimes the quality is not good on them. And you can already see that that is not a new IC. Someone's done a, a decent job of reballing it. That's okay. That, that looks okay to me, that does. That's passable, that. What I'm going to do now before it goes on, I'm just going to look with the... I'll have to cut you off and go back to main view because I'm just going to look around the perimeter of it just to see if anything's been damaged. The tiny little wires going all the way around the outside of this. If any of them have been damaged when they've been trying to reball it, then it, the IC is not going to work. So to me, that looks okay. That's all right. So that's that's a good candidate, that one. Right, I'm just going to put some flux on the board now. This one here. I'm going to flux it up again now. Okay. Now we want flux, but we don't want too much. We don't want it to start bubbling away underneath the flux and then end up pushing the IC off. Now, I always say to people, when you finish doing a um, an IC, you should give it a good nudge. Just a small nudge just to, to make it into place. Now, if you nudge this IC after you've run a jumper, there's a possibility that you're going to nudge the jumper as well at the same time. So, on these, I say, give it the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest nudge ever. And don't do it near where the repair's been done. So, that's the IC going onto the board. Now you can see microscope view. There we go. Right, so we need to get some good alignment on this now. Now, unfortunately, I cannot do good alignment and show you at the same time. So you're just going to have to kind of look um, at, at me here uh, with the camera. I don't know if I can maybe try and show you. Let me just see if I can get this camera in closer the board okay don't know if I can do this or not oh no I don't think it's gonna work it's just that's not good because now the light is not any better that will maybe do it oh I think it's about as good as it's going to get for you. Um, I need to see with both eyes to put one of these chips on. Um, no matter how good you get, you still, when you're doing the alignment on these things, you have to look with both eyes. Now, I mean, if someone wants to buy me a, a stereo microscope where I can see with both eyes at the same time so I can make better videos, feel free, but I really don't think anyone's going to be forking out that much money on me. <laughs> so... Anyway, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tweezers. I'm going to have a look at my alignment. Okay. I'll put the chip on the board. Right. Like that. So I think that is good enough alignment now. So now I am just going to heat it up. Okay, here we go. Here goes nothing. Well, say here goes nothing. Here goes everything, actually. And
So we're heating the board up. So we can see to the left hand side the component before that we were checking melted. So now we can see. Right, I'm gonna I don't need to hold on anymore, so I don't need to hold on with tweezers anymore. So I'm just gonna try get that camera back there again. Okay. There we go. So I don't need to hold on with tweezers anymore, so I'm gonna see if I can show you the next result. So we've got the chip on the board, right? not perfectly on the board it's just in place okay there it is okay so i've got to heat it up again now so i'm going to put a bit more flux on okay so we've kind of temporarily stuck it to the board here now so i'm going to heat it up again now and this time when it reflows into place we'll see it move so you'll be able to see it move on this camera now. You'll you'll see it just move slightly into place. It'll it'll find its own place when it reaches temperature. So are we ready on this now? So I'm going to heat up again. There we go. Let's do it slowly. And we'll see the chip should go to its its home in a minute. Okay. Right, we know the board's heated now because we can see that that component's moved there. Okay. I'm just going to have to go on to, to both eyes now because I need to give this a quick nudge. I need to zoom in and give it a nudge. I just need to be sure that it's in place. So, Just need to be a hundred percent sure that this has made its way home. Yeah. Right. I literally gave that the tiniest nudge ever. I'm sorry I can't show you, but I now think that is perfectly in place. Okay. Don't put any isopropyl on it too quick because you might uh, you might damage it with the heat. Just give it a few seconds. Now we'll just give it a give it a wash down. Get rid of some of that flux. All right. I'm going to turn my hot plate off now. So that's the that should be the repair done. Right. So I'm going to take off the capped on tape. Okay. Stick it in the bin. I found trying to reuse capped on tape just doesn't have good results. So single use stuff that just doesn't retain its stickiness properly. Uh, and it gets covered in flux as well. So. Right, so I've cleaned the board up a bit there. Now what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn off my hot air, turn off the soldering. Right, what we're going to look at under the microscope, very hot this board. Right, so we're just going to have a look sideways. And we're going to see what we can see on this chip. Okay. Let's see if we can see.
There we go. So we're just looking at the chip. So we'll try and see our little jumper at the side. It's very difficult to see that. You just about see it at the side there. See that little blob? It's right in the middle of the screen now. That's our little blob that's sticking out from the edge and going up. Okay, so can't really see much on there. The, the actual chip is quite low on the board because of the size of those solder balls. Um, so it's going to be very difficult to check. But what we're going to do now, I'm just going to check to make sure there's no short on VCC main. So VCC main is okay. Right. So I'm going to go back to, to main view. So this is our board. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stick this sticker back on again. In the, the vain hope that my repair has been a success. <laughs> and stick the antenna back on. I don't like backtracking, you see. So if I can get away without backtracking it, if I can get away without taking this board back out again, sorry. Yeah, I need to move that camera back. It's further away before. There, right. So, if I can get away without backtracking on this, and I can just do a single board out, board in, then I can get the repair done much quicker. So, I'm hoping, I know it's going to take a bit longer if uh, if it doesn't work still, but I'm hoping that this is going to work. So, I'm reassembling everything in such a way that I don't have to take it all back out again. So, that's, that's me done. So, I'll have to unplug a couple of things, but I shouldn't have to unplug much. I'm not going to put that sticker back on yet. So, right. We're ready there now, so let's plug in the touch flex display connector. And for the home button and front sensor assembly. So that's all plugged in. Put the power in, we don't have smoke, which is always a good start. Let's hold the power button down. Okay, it's powering on. Excellent. Can't beat the phone that powers on after a repair. Do you know what? The amount that you actually do, and you still do think, please power on, please power on. <laughs> Every time. It'll always be the same. So, we're just booting up now. Don't feel the phone getting unduly hot. So, I'm happy there. Hello. Right. So, let's press I. And we've got information. Let's press Home. No SIM card installed. OK. Set up manually. I'll just double tap down here. OK. I've just turned off voiceover off. There we go. Emergency call is what I was looking for. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Start, start, start. Cancel. And there we go. So that is how to do a touch disease M1 jumper repair. So that's that's to do a proper touch disease. So that will now, I guarantee, this phone will not come back to me again after this repair because that that fix permanently creates a new jumper for that chip to, to be able to get to. So the only, the only reason it could come back to me is if it gets a major drop or something else happens to it. So the other thing that I'm looking to do in future, um, I'm looking to try and uh, carry on with these uh, repair videos, but I think also... Um, helping people understand all of this equipment here. So I'm not using it all of the time, 
but maybe if I can explain the uh, bench multimeter, uh, we've got a, a waveform generator here, we've got the bench power supply, then we've got the oscilloscope. So we've, we've got so many bits of kit here, and maybe if I can just do a couple of videos on basic electronics, I think people might enjoy that. Um, you know, kind of creating circuits, troubleshooting, um, the, the fundamentals really. So I think it's it's interesting doing these repair videos, you know, but how many people realistically are going to have thousands of pounds worth of equipment to actually be able to do this repair? Um, you know, I do appreciate people sending it in. You can send your device in to me if you want this repair doing. Um, you know, you can send it in. Just go to uh, bitrepairs.com, www.bitrepairs.com. Um, you can find out uh, all the services that we offer there. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can, you can get me to do it. I, I do accept deliveries anywhere in the world. Um, I've just had a data recovery job coming from uh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, you know, I might show that one on the, on the video. But uh, comment down below, really. Um, let us know what you want to see in some of these videos. If there's any repairs you want to see, just let me know, and I'll see if I can do them for you. So anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the people that spend the time to watch these videos. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.